I'm Larry Walther, and this is PrinciplesOfAccounting.com, Chapter 2. In this module, we will be looking at the general ledger. The general ledger is a record of the accounts comprising the financial statements and their balances. There's a separate page in the ledger maintained for each account, and when I say page in the ledger, a separate page, I'm speaking in an iconic fashion of a manual system. Clearly this could be occurring electronically as well. And even in an electronic system, you might periodically print out a general ledger so that you can see each account. Let's look again at what an account would look like in the general ledger. Here I'm showing the cash account for this particular business. They started the year with no cash. I believe in this example it was actually a new business. The first transaction caused an increase of $25,000 to cash or a debit giving rise to a $25,000 balance on that date. And so it went for the subsequent transactions. Now, that's the general ledger account. But to make this make sense, we need to think back again to our general journal. On the left-hand side of the next slide, we see a general journal. Remember the definition of the journal, a chronological listing of the transactions of the business in their debit credit form. So here I'm showing a page from the journal, and the very first transaction reflects that we issued stock to shareholders in exchange for cash. Cash went up and was debited $25,000. Stockholders' equity went up $25,000 and was credited. Thus, there was a balanced entry debit cash and credit capital stock. That information next needs to be sorted or transferred or posted is the term we use, posted to the ledger account. This might be done monthly or weekly or in, in a computerized system on a real-time basis. Uh, again, we need to speak in an iconic fashion to represent what's happening to move the data forward. And so we would take each transaction in the journal, sort it out and post it to the appropriate ledger account. Here we see on journal page one a $25,000 debit to cash. We find a subsequent credit of $2,000 to cash that occurred on January the 4th, a $4,000 debit that occurred on January the 8th, and so it would go as information from the journal was posted to the ledger. It's a good idea to put check marks in a journal to show when, they, when the amounts have been posted to avoid posting the same transaction twice or indeed to forget to post a transaction at all. So we have a journals, the book of original entry, and then we have a subsequent set of records that are, that are posted periodically, a general ledger. They are fundamentally different. It's probably helpful to review the entire process. As transactions occur, each transaction is analyzed to determine the accounts affected and indeed how they're affected, debit or credit. Then, based on that information, we journalize those transactions. A journal entry is entered into the general journal for each transaction. And then, periodically, the journals are posted to the ledger. This drawing might be helpful. We examine our source documents, such as an invoice, to determine the accounts affected and their effects. We translate that into debit credit nomenclature and place that into the general journal. Periodically, then, we post the journal information to the ledger. The ledger accounts then give us a basis for moving forward in the accounting process toward the preparation of financial statements. Now, what I would like to do in closing this module is ask you to think in this fashion. Imagine you have two notebooks. One notebook has pages in it, and as you flip each page, you're seeing the chronological listing of transactions and events for the business, the general journal. They're in debit credit form, perhaps with a little brief narrative description, but the amounts and the accounts affected and how they're affected debit credit are clearly displayed as you flip through that. That by itself will tell you nothing about the business. You cannot thumb through that first notebook and know how much cash I have, how much accounts receivable I have, how much inventory I have, and so on. It's too jumbled. Okay? It's too complex to capture in your mind. You have to organize it or reorganize it or summarize it. And so you pull out your second notebook, and in that notebook, as you flip the pages, rather than being chronological, you'll find it's organized by account, a page for cash, a page for accounts receivable, a page for inventory and so forth. Now, how do I get information into that useful book, the general ledger? I post it or sort it from the general journal. I look at notebook one and I look at notebook two and I simply make my marks in notebook two based on what I'm seeing in notebook one. It's a transferring of that data. Now once I've done that, I've posted the general ledger. That general ledger gives me a springboard to move forward into knowing how much cash I have, how much accounts receivable I have. Indeed, what is my entire financial position? Uh, have I made money or lost money? That general ledger becomes very important. So you have your book of original entry and then the subsequent posting to the general ledger.